So in this video, I'm going to do you a worked example of how you do thematic synthesis. And Vivo does lots of different things, but I'm going to keep this really simple and show you three things that you need to know about in Vivo for you to get your thematic synthesis done. So the first thing you need to know is how do you get your files into Envivo? So you would simply go up to import, you would click files, and then that will open the location on your computer where all your files are stored, and you would just click open, and then that will import your files for you. I'm not gonna do that now because this is one I've prepared earlier, and here are 11 papers. This was from a qualitative systematic review I did a few years ago where I was looking at the views of physiotherapists on their role in helping people self-manage long-term conditions. So here are my 11 files that I have brought in. So the second thing you need to know is how do you locate your files? And you'll see in the tab on the left, there is a section that says files. So if you ever need to get back to them, you just click on there and it will bring you back here. So let us open a file because then we can start coding. So if you double click on whichever one it is you want to open, we're going to pick this one. This is Lisa Robinson's work. I'm a big fan of Lisa Robinson and the work she has done around uh, falls and trying to prevent falls with older people. So let's start with that. You click on it and then it will open up in this right hand side of Envivo. And what you've got here is literally just the finding sections of science finding section of Lisa's study. I cut and pasted it verbatim. I put it into Word. I sorted out the formatting because I wanted it to be nice and clean. I made sure that if there was a direct quote from a participant, then I put that into italics because visually it just helps me see straight away what were the participants saying and what were the authors reporting on as they wrote it up. So on this right hand side, lovely. OK, here you have got your data that you are going to be analysing. And so the third thing you need to know in Envivo is codes, where you're actually going to do your coding. And so on the left hand side, there is a section here that says codes. What I tend to do is I will have three different folders, uh, one that's for free codes, one that's for descriptive, and then one that's for the analytical. So I will show you those as we go along. But as I say, this is a worked example. So here is one that I prepared earlier. And this is what it will look like basically when you've finished your free coding. So you can see here at the bottom, there are 52 items. So these were all the different codes that I came up with for each of those, uh, for all of those 11 studies that I included in this qualitative systematic review. So let's have a look at the data here. And so what have we got? And you, you need to make sure you know your data quite well before you start doing this phase. So I would say read each of your finding sections through a couple of times before you get going. So this first sentence here, let's have a look. Despite such observations, however, physios indicated that, oh dear, sorry, this is a slight pain with how it is on the screen, isn't it? How do I make that better? Maybe make that a bit narrow. Okay. So despite such observations, physios indicated that many of them who, many of the older people they came into contact with were poorly motivated to participate in an exercise based falls prevention program. So you're going to go line by line with your coding here. You don't want to go paragraph by paragraph, but sometimes your line by line actually ends up being sentence by sentence. And that's OK. The key here is to not just skip ahead and think, oh, I've coded that sentence. Boom, I'm done. Because sometimes there can be a couple of codes in each sentence. So I'm reading that and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, OK, how am I going to summarize what the authors are saying with that? But also, I want to stay really close to what the authors are saying. I, I'm not putting my spin or my interpretation on it yet. You jump ahead too quickly, then that is bad. So I want to stay close to what they're saying, but I need to summarise that. So I'm thinking, OK, how do I do that? So older people poorly motivated is probably a nice, succinct way. I'm staying close to what they're saying, but I'm also summarising it. And so you will see over here, I have a code, older people poorly motivated. So when I initially coded that, I created that code and then I took this text and I left clicked and I dragged and I dropped it over here and you let go. And then all of a sudden that data is in that particular code, which is great. 
Now let's have a look at the next sentence. So the physiotherapist considered the older people accessing falls prevention services in the local region to be frail, vulnerable and largely responsible for their own functional decline. OK, that's quite an intense sentence, isn't it? So again, I'm thinking, how am I going to code that while staying close to the author's text, but also summarising it? So I think I'm probably going to go with patients responsible for own functional decline. There we are. Patients responsible for own functional decline. Sorry, this is because I'm doing it on my laptop rather than the big screen because I kept losing bits when I did it that way. So let's just have a look at what else is in this code just so that you can, for transparency, see what is going on. Double click on it and here you will have everything that I have coded to that particular code. Um, so you, yeah, you scroll down and you can see all of that text. Let me shut that down. So because this is a worked example and I've already done this coding, what you need to know is actually how are you going to create a code? So I would tend to say go down to where there's white space, lots of different ways in Invivo that you can then create a new code. But I would tend to say uh, right click and then you'll come up with new code. You can actually do control shift N. It will tell you that new code. What are you going to call it? Uh, let's call it test just so that you can see and then again it's going to slot into the alphabetical uh, section here so I would just drag that and then I would drop it into test and you can see it's there uh, one file from one reference so we're going to scoot ahead and pretend you have now been through every single line every single sentence in all of your papers yes this is an intense process so be prepared for that but you've now got all of your codes here. So then you're like, oh, OK, descriptive codes. Now what do I do with them? This is how I do it. I would then take my free codes folder and I would right click and I would copy that entire folder. And then I'd come back up to codes and I would right click again and I would go paste. And it'll have a think about it. And eventually it will come up with a new folder. So it's literally copied that from that. I would then rename that folder to descriptive codes um, because then I can start moving things around. But I've got a nice, clear audit trail. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that to keep it clean because we're going to come now to descriptive codes. And you will see here those 52 codes are much more compressed now. And so if I open up one of these, you'll see it has this tree hierarchy structure. And this is because I have literally um, thought about, oh, OK, how do I organize these codes? You will see here we have this theme, older people poorly motivated, uh, patients responsible for their own functional decline. And you just start organizing these. And the way you do that is you think, well, OK, I'm, I'm just going to show you an example here. Uh, expert patient, best patient. So you are just going to do one tap on that particular theme and then you are going to let go and then you're going to drag and drop that into whichever thing it is you want to code it into. That's how you get your hierarchy. But you're literally saying, OK, how do I take all of these free codes and which relates to which. So you're basically starting to group them into these descriptive codes, but you're not changing the name of them at all yet. That will come in your next phase. So let's assume you have done that process. And what have we got here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's 10 different descriptive codes there. Let me just make a comment on here. So I always have a miscellaneous folder, and this is where there are things that I'm, I'm not prepared to, de to delete it. I don't want to get rid of it yet, um, but it's probably not going to answer my research question. So for, to, for my mindset, just to help me keep moving forwards, I will dump it into a miscellaneous folder there. I'm then going to do that same process. I'm just going to copy this particular folder. Sorry, it's... Yeah, in vivo can be a little bit sticky. Uh, so I'm going to right click, I'm going to copy that, I'm going to paste it up here again and then rename it so that I've got my analytical themes. And you will see here, this is far, uh, it's just a lot more concise, isn't it, than having all of these. So when you get to this analytical theme stage, you have your research question in front of you 
and you are thinking about, okay, I've got all these themes, these all meet my inclusion, or I've got all these codes, they meet my inclusion criteria, how do I turn them into themes that will actually answer my research question? And that is where I will begin to rename some of these analytical themes so as they make more sense. But again, this is still quite a messy process. So you can even see with this one here, I called it therapeutic, uh, trusting therapeutic relationship or therapeutic alliance or patient therapist relationship. So I wasn't quite sure. I knew that was a grouping, but I didn't quite have the naming of it. Actually, what it ended up being uh, called was valuing the quality of the patient therapist relationship. But as you can see, this is part of your analysis still. So it's quite messy. But if you open that up, you will see all the different codes that align with that particular theme. If we go back up to focus on active participation, again, you will see here with your tree hierarchy, every single thing that got coded into that focus on active participation. So this is where Enviva is amazing because it gives you this beautiful audit trail where you can see how you got from your data to your codes, to your descriptive codes, to your analytical themes. That is how I, in, I use Enviva and I really hope it was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.